previously on Face. Hello and welcome to the 101st episode of the Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey, and with me, as always, Andrew Panton, way up there in Canada, and everybody's favorite British wanker, Gavin Free, uh, from uh, from Oxfordshire via Austin, Texas. How thank you? Uh, how are you doing, fellas? Uh, I'm good. Reluctantly Andrew, good. Andrew was saying lactating women kinks. Yes. Yeah. Not cakes. I thought he was saying cakes. Yeah, I mean, it was clear after the fact, but I also was just, I completely botched that. It was a mess. I don't know if we necessarily need to revisit the lactating That was when you were in, the, you were in the bunker for half Yeah, episode. like I just botched that immediately, <laughs> and I was in my own head for the rest of that episode. So I thought you said cakes, and then I'm talking about like using tit milk to make a cake. And then yeah. uh, you, you then you said your mum was talking about sugar cookies, so I thought we were still on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened. I no. think a part of the problem is that we only hear each other over Discord, so it sort of sounds like we're all playing among us at the time. But even in the when I was proofing it, I didn't I still didn't understand what you said. That's <laughs> fair. Like, What's the honor about? I was trying to remember in the moment what I thought, because cakes make sense to me. <laughs> I feel like maybe <laughs> I does. also thought cakes. Yeah, it wasn't until the comment leavers were like, Gavin's an idiot. I was like, oh, it still doesn't well, make fair, a ton of you sense. Are. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. <laughs> it was from, from my perspective, I started out and I immediately fucked it up in the order I wanted to do it. And I'm like, I just need anyone who wants to play ball with me right now. I'll take it. And you throwing <laughs> you going in the dessert category was like being thrown a life preserver. And I'm like, I'll just take whatever we can get. We'll go oh, in this angle. We got to figure a way through this because I fucked this. <laughs> Immediately. So, so, what do you guys want to talk about today? I, uh, I got nothing. Speaking of fuck this, we can, we can transition immediately to fuck up that happened. We want to. Oh, yeah. The fucking baseballs. All right. <laughs> Let's get in to the fucking baseballs. I'd love to get Eric involved in this as well. What happened? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll break it down what happened. Rooster Teeth is a many-headed monster. We are a company of hundreds and hundreds of people. And so uh, one of the frustrating things about being an on-camera talent from time to time is that when a mistake is made behind the scenes or there's an issue behind the scenes, the talent wears it. So what happened was we released about 200 baseballs that we had hit or at least swung at. Uh, you know the whole saga. But now they're, they're all gone. Please stop looking for them. Don't go there. It is just a haven for snakes. Uh, there, we, we've accounted for every baseball. There are zero more baseballs. We've, we've checked serial numbers. They're all accounted for. 100% <laughs> of them have been recovered. Please do not look for more baseballs. Okay, so what happened was we wanted to allow people the opportunity to buy them. We knew that there'd be more people wanting to buy them than we had to sell. And so you try to be as precise as possible with that. So we said at 10 a.m. Central Time on whatever day it was, we're going to release the balls. And then everybody who wants one can come in and it's kind of like a melee, I understand. But like people that want it can all like go there at the same time and, and, and you know, try their luck, recognizing that we don't have enough balls for everyone, unfortunately. Uh, but, uh, you know, I only got so there was only so much juice in my arms. There's a physical day. cost to this item. Like it makes complete sense that it would be a limited amount of them. A huge physical cost that it cost me uh, <laughs> overall about about th about three weeks of of of, oh, no. of uh, pain. Cost me a tripod. <laughs> cost Gavin a tripod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, co it cost him some financial pain. <laughs> so uh, so what happens is we're not the ones that actually take the balls and put them up on the store. They have to go to our shipping uh, company and then they have to it, it, like onboard them and put them into the uh, into the inventory system. And then they have to be individually wrapped and all that stuff. And while that's going on, they have to be added into our web store via a back end. And this is something I used to do for the first seven or about the first eight years of the company. I ran the store by myself. So I understand how how difficult and how much more work it is behind the scenes than you may realize. It sounds like you just hit a button and you go, but it's really not that simple. There's a lot of linking and branching and a lot of I's that got to be dotted and T's that got to be crossed. And so we asked them to be put up at 10 a.m. 
the person who ended up putting them in was not the person we told. Information gets passed down. There's a bit of a game of telephone from time to time, you know, a little purple monkey dishwasher in there. What essentially happened was the process, it's, it's not an exact process. It takes anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes to add them to all the places that they need to be and then publish it to the store uh, and, and so that they go live. So the person that does it, they typically start about 9.45. Uh, and because, you know, that gives them a good 15 minutes to work with. And then they just get it as close to, to in this instance, to 10 a.m. as possible. What happened in this instance is it just the process went faster than normal. <laughs> and so not realizing uh, that we had a hard time, that department, uh, they just published them early. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is like, if you think about it, if you're just a person who's like whose job is to do that, you're like, well, I'd put them out five minutes early, then people have, you know, then they're just yeah. there waiting for you when you show up. I don't think they understood the demand. And so by about 9.50, uh, all of the balls had been sold out. <laughs> so the people who showed up early were rewarded by getting the balls because they showed up early and were like spam and refresh. So those people were, were uh, those early birds. They caught those worms. They got those little ball worms. Uh, and then the people who dutifully showed up at 10 a.m. when we told them to were like, what do you mean they're sold out? What the fuck? And they didn't get it. And they were understandably, justifiably upset, as were we. We were upset because people were upset. We wanted to give everybody a fair shot at mm. getting the balls. And we felt like uh, through no intentional fault of anybody's own uh, that we didn't deliver on that. And so we were gutted and frustrated. And as I know, the e-com department that, that uh, runs this on the back end, they were also disappointed. Now, my solution to this going forward, and I have talked about this a little bit with, uh, actually at length with Eric. You, By the way, you guys want to see a producer producing in action? Eric was on the ball that day. He was all over this all day long. Uh, shout out and, and, and major kudos to Eric for doing a hell of a job trying to get to the bottom of this and get it all worked out and get figured out what happened and how to make sure it doesn't happen again. My solution would be just to never announce an exact time again because uh, it, we fucked it up twice and I don't want to do. I, <laughs> no, I don't want to do that to, again. No, Can't we, do if, it. no, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. When things like this happen, I don't really care why these things happen. It's it's upsetting, yeah. but what are you going to do? Belabor the point? You know what right. I mean? Yeah. All I want to know is, are we capable of doing the thing that we initially set out to do going forward? So I had a lot of conversations with a lot of people in the e-com team, and I was assured that going forward, when we have these down-to-the-minute drops, we can do them. I found out what the limitations are. I found out what the problems or what the hiccups would be. But I was assured that when we go if going forward, if we wanted to do this stuff for down to the minute stuff, what happened this time won't happen again. And we can do it to a precise minute the way that awesome. we want it. To me, it sounds like Ecom went in for pleasantries. They went in early. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you you know I'm not a fan of that. I And hey, listen, I think there's a lot of people that feel like your stance on pleasantries is 100% validated by this whole <laughs> ordeal. Uh, yeah. I saw I saw a lot of that sentiment. As a fan of pleasantries, let me. I, there's a line of pleasantries. You can have too much pleasantries. They were too early on the pleasantries. You can't you can't be 20 minutes early on the pleasant a five minute pleasantry. That's a different yeah. story. So uh, I know that there's a lot of audience members out there who are frustrated. We are also frustrated. Eric has put a lot of work into making sure that the next time we do this, it'll work without a hitch. And I'll tell you right now, if we fuck it up a third time, I'm I'm just going to eliminate the opportunity <laughs> for us to release to the minute. I'm just like, it'll be out sometime on this yeah. day. Best of luck. Check, you know, like, well, I'll give you like, we, we may give you like a window, like more, like mm -hmm. it'll be like when you have to get your internet fixed and you call AT&T or, or Spectrum or who, <laughs> whoever you have internet with and they go, yeah, we'll be there between 8 a.m. and noon. That'll yeah. be the new window. We'll be like, why would we we're going to gonna drop the balls. Why, why would we want to operate in the <laughs> worst way of that? Your idea. Because we can't fix, operate in the, they, in the accurate the way, way. The way to fix this going forward is for us to operate like Spectrum Internet. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, yeah. that's not a great comparable. But the Jeff's defense, I went through a phase where I was super into trying to collect like Mondo posters like a long, like mm -hmm. many years ago, and they do not put specific times out. They're like, it'll release on this day. At least they didn't back then, but they would always put them into the system at around 10 a.m., but they were never definitive. 
So I think there's yeah. there's room for that. There's a there's a history of companies doing that. I'm just saying if we blow it again, if we're if we if we strike out, if we're 0 for 3 on this, <laughs> I think that we got to reevaluate. Yes. I'm willing to give absolutely. it another shot. If we get 3 strikes on our baseballs. <laughs> yeah, but it, I'm absolutely willing to give it another shot. I appreciate the work that Eric did. I trust the ecom team can get it right. I'm just saying if we don't we got to cut our losses. Totally. If it happens again, I won't talk about it. You guys could talk about it on the show. I won't talk about it on the show because I won't have anything mm-hmm. that we could air. That, like <laughs> not, nothing that I would say would be usable. So like okay. I'm guaranteeing that it will not happen again. All right, there we go. So to that end, we want to do a make good. We want to make it up to the audience members who followed the letter of the law and showed up at 959 to wait for the clock to tick over to 10 and try to buy the balls and find out they were not there. I've already asked Ecom to buy us more balls. I'm prepared to go out and do it all over again. Now, oh, my initial Christ. idea, my initial idea, and, and there's a counter argument to that, and I'd love to, to and I think, I think the counter argument's probably ultimately correct, but I, I'd like to at least hit with, my initial idea was to mix it up a little bit, to make it a little different, to share some of the burden on me. Uh, maybe I hit 100, maybe Gavin hits 50, maybe Eric does 20, and then maybe we mail a couple to Andrew, and he can do whatever weird shit Andrew does with stuff. And then we just kind of mix it all up, and then you're getting like the potential of maybe you get a Gavin ball in, in blue, yeah. or you get an Eric ball in orange, or a Jeff ball in black. Yeah, different paints for different people. Uh, Andrew's counterpoint was... We can't make a new product that's different because that's just going to make the the people who already bought the black hit balls want the new product as well. We should there should be parity between the product so that everybody gets the same potential ball. And I think uh, as much as it pains me to say it, I think he's probably right. Man, this, this is deep. I think it's also a conversation that the audience could respond to, like in the comments of this. Like, would they rather us go. just do the exact? Same thing as like a pure make good. So people who already have one don't feel obligated to buy this one. Or do you yeah. want, a, would you prefer what Jeff just said of like uh, us all having our own takes on the balls and then doing like a second release essentially that way with a larger volume of them? We'll let the audience decide. We'll kind of go by audience sentiment after this airs. Uh, either way, we're going to in some fashion either create identi- an identical product or a newer altered mm-hmm. product and release another I guess two or three hundred balls out into the wild. So if you didn't get one, you'll be able to to try again. <laughs> uh, just because we want to make it up to you, because I, I there were I, I, I there were there was a lot of anger out there in the world, uh, and uh, mm-hmm. and I get it, I get it, yeah, and I want to make it up. To, I want to make it up to every comment lever and every regulation listener out there. Like when you get beat out for something, like if it drops on time, that's just how it goes. Like it's it yeah, sucks, luck but of it's the like draw. you live with that. But like when the system fails, like when you feel like a bunch of bots bought it or whatever, like something went against it, that sucks. Like that's that's like an understandable frustration. So yeah, it sounds like we've been able to figure stuff out, hopefully, and uh, we will we will do a make it on this. And depending on what the audience wants, I think just to say sincerest apologies. Absolutely. If you showed up and felt slighted, we are going to do our absolute damnedest to make it up to you. It was very us, though. It was very f- face. It was very f- face. But, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't have to be so true to the letter of the show all the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you you wanted to see, you wanted to roll into something. So speaking, of, I have I have a little like story to tell that was that's very funny that happened to me recently. Speaking of like show expenses, I I filed my taxes last week, and typically whenever I I have done things for this show because it's work, but it's weird. It's a weird category of thing. I've never really tried to claim what would be traditional work expenses, and so mm. this is the first year. I attempted to do so, including the porta potty. So I was ner- like, I was like, how do I, how do I submit this in like a way that makes sense <laughs> that's not going to be like highly questioned? So I thought, oh, I'll fancy up the wording, and I called it production equipment. I listed the porta potty as production equipment <laughs> on my form. I put the price amount down. I put the bingle wheel down as production equipment and i put some comic books down when we're doing research extensive research i put all of the bts sauce orders as uh production meals i was trying to class up (laughs) everything (laughs) as much as possible Um, you should be expensing all this to the company not yeah i don't know how any of this works so you're an employee talk talk to the producer (laughs) so so i put all that in and i brought it to the person that does my taxes 
and I showed them the <laughs> form and I'm like, so I got these, I got this production stuff. And they immediately said, they pointed at the porta potty and said, what is this? I said, what do you mean? It's, they're like, no, like, I understand it says production equipment. What was the equipment? And I had to say porta potty <laughs> and the look of shock on their, like, they were like, they said, they audibly said, what? And they looked so confused, <laughs> and I had to then explain what it was that it was a porta potty and why it was related to the show, and that we made these mugs, and it was this whole thing. And then I realized, oh no, she's gonna do this with all of them. So then she immediately pointed to the next one. What is this production equipment? And I had to just go bingo wheel. Didn't question that one, and then we we're able to move on. But the embarrassment of having to tell somebody porta potty. And there's just a shocked look on her face was very funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm, I'm almost certainly going to get audited. I'm excited <laughs> for this process. And you could have just got reimbursed. I could have just got potentially. Yeah, I don't know how any of that stuff works, yeah. as I said. We, but. we have a form, I think. Do we? Yeah, it's expense reports. Yeah, it's called Eric. <laughs> can fill. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll introduce you to the wonderful world of concur expense sheet reporting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, so they made those audible noises, and then you welcome, man. Enjoy. Yeah. Well, some of it, to be fair, like, I don't, the porta potty was a weird thing where it was just something I wanted to do, and I felt like it would be tough to get approval of because it's expensive. It was over $1,000. Uh, so I just did it. Yeah, it just feels, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a lot of money for you. Just, I mean, I mean, just so you're aware, there's no way I would have gotten approval for over a thousand dollars for a porta potty. <laughs> exactly. Like, just, like, like, there, like, it's just, it just wouldn't have had, like, totally. I just would have gotten it. Sold out on mugs, though. Like, it was a valuable. Yeah, it was take worth it from it. It the hundred percent worth it. We sold one thousand tiki mugs because of that porta potty you bought us. Right, right. Me. And yeah. and you guys understand the order that these things happened yes. in, right? Okay, just yes. making sure. Okay, we didn't 100%. sell the tiki mugs before we did the porta potty. No, the but I came first. listen. It it all worked out in the end. It was a clear thing. It was a great idea. I think it's impossible to deny that it was a great idea ultimately. What what you're doing though? What we're doing is we're building a resume of success so that now when we go <laughs> to uh, I don't know the finance department and say, hey, we need to buy uh, you know a, this thousand dollar piece of nonsense, but we promise it'll turn into content down the road. Uh, they'll go, oh yeah, well you've proven that time and time again. So uh, sign off. When you use the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right? You don't want a random passerby looking in on you, so why would you let people look in on you when you go online? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door. Did you know that your internet service provider knows every single website you visit? And what's worse is they can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who will use your data to target you. ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that your online activity can't be seen by anyone. I use ExpressVPN on all my devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected, even if they don't have ExpressVPN. Uh, ExpressVPN is a great service. I personally use it to look at libraries for other uh, streaming services that I can't access. It just it adds so much content. It's awesome. And the best part is using ExpressVPN is as easy as closing the bathroom door. You just fire up the app, click one button, and you're protected. ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by Mashable, The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like me and believe your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash face today. Use my exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash face, and you can get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash face. This ad is brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Get farm fresh seasonal produce and easy to make recipes delivered right to your door every week. Ingredients travel from the farm to your doorstep in under a week so they always arrive fresh, all without a trip to the grocery store or farmer's market. It's all about convenience with HelloFresh. Not only do the ingredients come pre-portioned so you're not overbuying or wasting food, but it's easier than ever to get filling meals on the table in a snap with options like family friendly or quick and easy recipes. One of the many reasons why I love HelloFresh, you get the box of stuff and the recipes are always easy and, and clear to understand. When I first started using HelloFresh, I didn't have much cooking experience. I had a few dishes I could make, but HelloFresh has really expanded what I've been able to make and really allowed me to enjoy the experience of cooking as a whole. 
It's awesome. It shows up. It's super easy. You have delicious food. I would highly recommend it. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Face16 and use code Face16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Face16 and use code Face16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Thank you. I have another thing I need to bring up quickly uh, because I should have done this at the beginning of the show, but I'm, I'm an idiot. Last Ooh. episode, Jeff, you came at me pretty, pretty aggressively at the end. You, you took some shots <laughs> my way. <laughs> you just fucking I felt I felt I told a, a good story. And you're like, oh, you got, what about you? You got any fucking content for this episode? So I came up with a few games, Jeff. And one of them, one of them is sort of time sensitive. <laughs> Are we going to start off the next 100 episodes with you being mad at me? Uh, no, we're, it's going to conclude within this one. Because I did a thing. I came, I came with the games, Jeff. This is okay. game one. This is an important thing I should have mentioned earlier for my idea with it. Before you go any further, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Did, did you mail something to me? No. Okay, just making sure. Because okay. I had a FedEx yeah. uh, note on my door. And I, if it was like for the show, I didn't get it. Okay, cool. No, but speaking <laughs> of, of mailing stuff, so this ties in. We got a we got a Bovril taste test potentially yes. happening oh. today. By the way, I've had Bovril. That's exciting. We can talk about that. Yeah. I made popsicles. I have six popsicles. I made a tray. Three of them <laughs> the are pop. good things. No, they're all different things. There's oh, okay. one Bov Pop in that mix. Now I didn't put these together, so I don't know which one is what. There's six of them. I will have five of them. Three of them are good. Three of them are bad. Jeff, you can pick which ones I eat whenever, whenever you want to. If you say a number, one through six, I will then pull that one out. Front left is the, uh, the first one. So front left and to the right of it is two. I'll go up from there. Um, there's six flavors. The three good ones, seven up, because that was the first soda chug I did. I used seven up. The okay. second good popsicle is Coca-Cola, my, my cold okay. beverage of choice. Third, <laughs> delicious Popsicle, apple juice. A big apple guy. Love apple oh, juice. Oh, yeah. Is it Cosmic okay. Crisp juice? Yeah, uh, it's not. I wish it was. It'd be even better. The bad three, salad cream is <laughs> one of them. <laughs> uh, the next bad one is Bovril, as you know about. And one of them is pancake batter. Uh, I was told. Oh, Jesus. I was told that one of these did not freeze at all. And I am not excited about that one. So this is going to be sort of a Bovril taste test, but possibly in a true salad cream like fashion, I, you might not pick the Bovril one. I might completely avoid the Bovril. So you're going to do test. five. Uh, yeah, we're going to do five. One of these I will not eat. You can pick. You just say a number one through six at any point in the show. And then I will. Pull Eric out. has a good point. You should do them blind. Yeah. Well, I don't know what they are already. They're already blind to me. What was no, like, no, no, Don't no. even what, look. What, what what I'm saying is that say Jeff says three. Okay. You pull out three, but you don't look. You like close your eyes. Don't look at what three <laughs> okay. is. Pull it out okay. and then put yeah. it directly into okay. your mouth because okay. I think like don't smell it. Just go. No, for that's it. fair. That's fair. So, th I'll, so I'll this do will that. be your first time having Bovril, and it's a frozen Bov Pop potentially. Yeah, potentially. I don't know if that's the one that didn't freeze. Did you uh, go and find Bovril yourself, or did my Bovril find your show? Bovril never arrived? That's what I was saying. <laughs> oh as God. far as packages go, I don't know. They they we should really check on that. I'm assuming Amazon delivered. They might be lost. They couldn't find my door. They're missing. <laughs> so I had to go and buy my own Bovril over the weekend. And oh, uh, was it was easy to find. Uh, I had to go to three grocery stores. So I wouldn't say it's the easiest to find, but I was able to get it. But it existed in your in your town. Oh, it totally exists in my town. Yeah, it wasn't like every store had it, but yeah, it, it exists here. I, I was looking on Amazon for Bovril. There was like one seller and it was like next day prime delivery. And on the thing, it said imported from Canada. So I thought, oh, if I just turn around and put a Canadian address, maybe it'll be quicker. But I guess they like pre-imported from Canada to set in the US. So I guess to, to send it back to Canada <laughs> has been a real problem because that, that stuff's still not been delivered. That's incredible. Yeah, they're lost. Uh, yeah, it just says, oh, it says delivered today. Really? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Do I oh, have more Bovril in my mailbox? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I hope I like it. <laughs> oh, fuck. I can't believe, Jeff, you had, you tried Bovril outside of proper f face cannon. Well, what, what else am I going to do? I, I was, well, Not listen. have it. I was, it was given to me 
uh, during, uh, I went to a, com- all right, so I, well, well let, let's do this first before we get into me. Well, this is ongoing. You can, you can tell a story and then in the middle of the all story right. say four and then I just have to fucking pull <laughs> okay, one out. Okay, got it. So, so, so I went to England, I went to the UK for a week. I spent uh, like eight days over in London, in your neck of the woods, Gaff. By the way, London says hi, they miss you. Hello. Uh, that's, not, that's not true at all. And nobody, <laughs> everybody I talked to in England, <laughs> they'd the never heard of you. Choice. I'm like, okay. uh, do you yeah. want any messages for Gavin? And they're like, what? Who? Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, first off, Bovril, you made it sound like Bovril's everywhere in the UK. It took me six days before I finally <laughs> encountered Bovril. That's going to Sainsbury's, Waitrose, uh, Tesco, all the different grocery stores. Have, talking to people at stores, being like, do you guys, you know where I could find Bovril? And everybody going, why would, why would you want to find that? Did, and I'm did like, I say oh, Bovril say- was everywhere? I said I found it in a vending machine and at yeah. a football game. I'm not out there I buying mean, it in the supermarket. No. It is, it's not readily available. And when I asked people for it, they all, all universally said, just get Vegemite. It's way better. Or just get Marmite. <laughs> it's way better. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not what I want. I want Bovril. And they're like, no, you don't. And I had to like argue with people. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, listen, you don't want it. And I'm like, I'm telling you, I need it for a thing. And they're like, it must be in the supermarkets. Just get Marmite. So I was there uh, for the other, one of the other podcasts I do, the Theme Park Podcast, as well as for like a, a Rooster Teeth community meetup. So during the community meetup, uh, and I was doing this meetup with a um, uh, uh, regular fan, Jack. I'm not sure where he is in the hierarchy right now. <laughs> so what's called down? fan fan jack well he's not oh. minor league fan anymore i think i think i think he's up from minor league oh, to just regular that's a promotion fan. but uh yeah i think so uh and so i was on a panel and somebody came up and gave it to me and it had a bow on it and they put like a little rooster teeth union jack logo on it and they were like here we got this for you and here's some boiling water and here's something to spread it on will you eat it in front of everyone and since it was being filmed i thought yeah it's like might as well because also uh, I wasn't sure I could bring it back to the States because somebody uh, told me that you, <laughs> that you can't import it to the U.S. Like you can't bring it from the U.K. Well, to the U.S. So you said you, 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 it was being filmed. So you're like, yeah, no yeah. problem. Do you have that footage? Can we uh, see that? I think um, uh, I think my girlfriend Emily does, has. So I, I can okay. get it to you guys. I don't have it on me. Great. And what were your uh, thoughts? Uh, so I had it two ways. Uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently the, the boil, boil, like, uh, making it like b- beef bouillon kind of boiling it is not the main way. I guess people mostly use it as a spread on toast, kind of like Marmite. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I had it that way first. Yeah. And, oh, by the way, Andrew, uh, go ahead and eat number two. Okay. With your eyes closed, please. But while you're doing that, I'll, I'll upload the photo just for reference, uh, of me right before. Did he keep all the, the pops behind it, behind him? I put it in that the fridge, the- and my mic stand is covering <laughs> was- the fridge door, so I had to slide the mic. That was an okay. immense chair creak. It, it sliding. Okay, so I'm pulling the pop out. I'm so nervous. I should have, like, a puke bucket. This is, okay. <laughs> pop two coming out. It is solid. Try, try to identify it without opening your eyes. Yeah. Oh, it's rubbing up. Oh. This is a, this is, oh. This is good. <laughs> this is a good one. Congratulations. Thank you dodged you. the bob. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've uploaded a photo. Uh, it's on the <laughs> face Instagram already, I think. It's of uh, me. And uh, by the way, a snazzy new regulation listener T-shirt, which I think is uh, just uh, adorable. very nice. Uh, w- and there's a regular fan Jack in the background. And I'm holding the bottle that they gave me. Uh, so the first way I had it was as a spread. And I have to say it was fucking heinous, <laughs> like absolutely disgusting. If you've ever had Vegemite, if you've ever had Marmite, this is just as bad, if not like 5% worse. I mean, just dog shit. Not edible. Whoa. Just not edible. However, then I took a, a teaspoon and of, of this goop and I stuck it in the boiling water and I spun it around a little bit and made like the hot Bovril cup like you would have at a football game. Yeah. And I give it a I give it a 5.2 out of 10. Okay. So and what was the first one? Dog shit out of 10 and then 5.2 out of 10? Yeah. Like I found myself throughout the panel still sipping it a little bit. I th- probably oh. end up drinking half. Half of a little Dixie cup full of of Bovril. Uh, yeah, it's not great, but in that form, <laughs> I can see like on a cold day, you like you kind of want a little nourishment and to be warmed up. I can see in in much the same way, maybe you would drink like hot bone broth or like a, a bouillon. Uh, I can see it being uh, yeah, a little bit of a hearty ut- drink. Utilitarian. I've never had it as a spread, so I'll probably try that at some point. But yeah, I don't I don't mind it as a hot Bovril. Also, at a glance, Jack's T-shirt. 
uh, in the corner of my eye looked like it said anal passage. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other podcast I do, Anal Passage. Can we, can we just sell that shirt remade as Anal Passage? Anal, pass- anal Passage. <laughs> Jack knows it. As a face shirt? Yeah. Uh, Eric, Eric, can you get on that, please? <laughs> <laughs> I would wear that. <laughs> we gotta do that. That's awesome. <laughs> Jack would, would think at a glance that, we're, that I'm repping the merch, but it's really just... <laughs> you know what would be the ultimate? What would be the ultimate is if we we work it out with his wife so she switches out the annual pass oh. shirt in his laundry for an annual pass oh. shirt and see if we can get him see if we can get him to wear it without knowing he's wearing oh. an annual pass shirt. We, could, we would have fantastic. to move fast on that before this episode comes out. Yeah, Shit. yeah. We'll have to get Which right is... On top uh, Less than a week. <laughs> it's just yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> we have to like swap the shirt and put it right at the top of the pile. But, okay, but we've kind of, this is like the bat paranoia. He now will have to check his annual pass shirt always. He's going to have to constantly <laughs> double check that shirt. So it kind of works no matter what. We've created shirt paranoia. <laughs> oh... Cry. Oh, Eric's already sent it off to the merch team. Okay, so, so there you go. Pop there's up. your, there's <laughs> your uh, seven up, uh, bov pop. Oh, yep. very clear. So you just dodged the top by the looks. Of I it. did. I took took a bite out of the top of it. Dodge the bov is a great name for this. I'm just gonna steal <laughs> that, Jeff. That's fantastic. We're trying to dodge the yeah. bov. How uh, on a scale of one to ten, how do you rate the sprite pop? Nine. It was way better than I anticipated. That wow. was delicious. Damn. I, I like as well. You, you've just outright refused to try hot bovril here. You've gone straight for the bov pop. I've gone straight for the bov pop, yeah. All right. I, didn't, I guess I could have used the Keurig to heat up the bov, right? Isn't that a thing I could have done? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The yeah. bov machine. <laughs> Ramen and bov exclusively. That's what that Keurig is for. <laughs> Maybe that's... Dude, there should be a bovril flavored ramen. <laughs> oh my god. Gonna, that's like the hot like, new thing. A bovril cake up. I saw so many videos of people pouring Bovril down the sink after trying it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really, honestly, hot Bovril is not as bad as I thought it would be. It is, it's drinkable. I wouldn't choose it, but uh, I, I would, in much the same way, like for people who don't like coffee but need to be, need to be warm on a cold mm-hmm. day, I could see it yeah. absolutely yeah. doing the trick. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Saw a few um, comment leavers from St. Kilda. Uh, saying that they've been on the pier and stuff, and it and it was weird to hear their the place they live mentioned on. Oh, face. really? The the reach of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy because that's far away. Yeah, you know what else is interesting? Talking about the reach. So you know, I did this panel, and there were you know maybe a hundred uh, gener- general rooster teeth community members there, right? Yeah, and uh, I was surprised how many of them do not listen to this podcast. We got to do a better job of convincing people to listen to this podcast. <laughs> oh, so not a lot of uh, regulation listeners? There were more, I'd say like maybe half were regulation listeners. The other half had no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, they weren't up to date on anal passages? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just realize we've got some work to do. We've got work to do within our own larger community to, uh, to reach out to those people. Eric says, sure, it's being worked on that. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Just open up the Photoshop file. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, yeah. How do how do we get more people to listen to this? Or is it better that more people don't? It's like our little secret <laughs> podcast, exclusive club. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. The, I mean, animated will come out at some point potentially. Yeah, I feel like that'll be a good reach for people. It's kind of tough. It's a tough thing to jump into. It's funny, as I said, getting texts from the My Hubby's Bagels people. Oh, and and speaking of that, I never said on the show there is a regulation bagel. The regulation ah, bagel yeah. exists now. It is a definitive thing. You can order it. It's on the menu. I did my research. I tried a bunch of different combinations of thing. The regulation bagel is a, a bagel. I, I like it on a cheddar bagel, but I guess it could be on any bagel, especially dependent on availability of the bagels. But I would say a cheddar bagel is not regulation as a bagel. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter. This is my regulation bagel. This is, this yeah. is how mm. I've worked this out. This is regulation right. for the show. Um, it is half of it is the bacon cream cheese that they have. And the other half is the garlic and uh, black pepper cream cheese, half and half as a sandwich. Incredible. 
That so sounds good. really good. <laughs> it's really fucking good. Now, is this a hot bagel? This is you get it toasted there. It's your choice. I, I get it okay, toasted. Okay, I ask okay. for a regulation bagel toasted. Step to the side. <laughs> get my bagel. It's fantastic. I'd highly recommend. <laughs> what did it feel like to stand in line and order your own creation for the so very first this? Time? <laughs> it's funny you say that, Jeff. They have sold out every day. Like they've been so popular. It's been amazing. Like the they've gotten so much love from the community and just uh, well, our community and just the community in which I live in generally. Um, yeah, they have so much support. They're selling out all the time. They're in lines. So I decided I was going to go there super early. They open at 8 a.m. I left to go there and I was in line at 7 a.m. Like I'm going to be the first person in line. Did they open early and sell all the bagels to you and then everyone in the line was pissed <laughs> off? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have a whole lot of people mad at me. <laughs> okay. This is... This is a, a great f face on me, though. This is the classic. So I show up at 7 a.m. When do you think the next person showed up to join this line that I had created? 7.58. 7.58? 7.43 was the next. I spent <laughs> 43 minutes in a line of one. 43 <laughs> minutes just by myself. Then a couple, a couple showed up at 7.43. They were behind me. And then one other group showed up at 7.52, when we were let in a little bit early, they opened up at 7.52. They typically open up at 8. <gasps> I got there an hour early for a three-person line. Uh, <laughs> but I, I got all my stuff. I ordered all the bagels. I ordered the hollow bread. I got the regulation bagel. I was so happy. It was a great experience. Ever since they've opened, they have sold out every single day by noon. The only day they haven't sold out <laughs> was the day that I showed up at 7 a.m. I think they may have sold out before it closed, but it was like they went the whole day with bagels. So it was just a quiet day. The one day that I showed up an hour early, it wouldn't have mattered. I could have come early, later in the day. How were the line pleasantries? Uh, there was really a non-existent line. There were, there were not great You didn't great talk to the other couple? You didn't try to... I would have tried to push the regulation bagel. You'd be like, hey, have you guys been here before? I hear there's this thing called the regulation bagel that everybody's <laughs> yeah, trying. Yeah, like a secret. I love when you order it in, it comes in on the menu as secret regulation bagel is how it's categorized. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, it's been awesome seeing people take photos with their regulation bagels. Uh, it's delicious and uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Not great line pleasantries though. It was cold. I'd been there for like 40... 42 minutes just with shorts. It was just freezing. <laughs> I was so cold. How how'd the ankles hold up? Uh, you know, I got a, a little, I kind of pulled, I pulled something a little bit, but we, we oh, were okay. No. We were fine. Ooh. I was worried. I was sitting in front, like you kind of walk up to the store and a person walked by with their dog and I thought they were going to go into the line. So I was like, fuck, I need to be in line. I want to be the first one in. And so I immediately shot up and twisted and I felt like a little tightness in the Achilles. Oh, and I was like, I'm boy. a fucking idiot, but I'm good. I'm good. No issues. We're all fine. hundred percent. Push the marathon another six months. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew got up too fast to get a bagel. <laughs> I did not even to get a bagel to hold the line to maintain my status in line is the first person I would get to go in. Oh, Eric's got a good point. Uh, uh, Gab, you pick. Uh, five. Ooh. One, two, three, four. Okay, here we go. Okay, this one's still, this is frozen as well. No cheating. Oh, uh, fuck. I'm so nervous. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> <Don't get snapped>. oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We got it on the bomb. We you got, got the bomb. We got the bomb. Yes. I just feel like I want a, I want a game of battleship. <laughs> You sank our panting. Oh my god. Oh. 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 Andrew did not dodge the bomb. Oh my god. That sucks so much. Oh. Direct hit. Oh, that was that's a like, direct fucking hit, like Gavin. Face Russian roulette. Oh, I'm gonna take another bite. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, I'm drooling. Oh, I rolled on myself. <laughs> 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 
fucking criminals who like <laughs> sons. <laughs> well, nobody has it like that, you fool. <laughs> Describe the taste. It's Dude. beefy. It's very beefy. <laughs> it's very beefy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're gonna pull that out of the packet. Oh, oh, shit. Jesus Christ. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, God. Damn. I can taste it in my mouth. That's what it's, you taste oh. things. No, but like, it's it still is poignant. Oh, my God. It's It tastes, it's, the taste hasn't left. It's still oh. there. So it's nine, nine out of ten for seven up. What was, what was this one? <laughs> negative six. That's you can't. No, it was it's bad. Negative. I just did. <laughs> There's no way that's worse than frozen salad cream. I will, we'll, we'll find out <laughs> potentially. Oh Jesus Christ! I think Nick's onto something. We should call it the. Uh, he he t put in chat freezy Ugh. beefy. We should call the freezy beefy bob pop. <laughs> oh, oh we, God. we should make a bunch you can give them to kids at Halloween. No, I to, oh, man, I need to see the picture. I'm sending oh, it right yeah, now. Yeah, please, please. Oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, <Christ. laughs> it looks <He's> a, fizzy. <laughs> oh, it looks, it looks I would, like I could have believed that would be the frozen soda. <laughs> yeah, oh. that looks like a Coke. That's oh, what I kind of thought when I could see it. I wasn't sure if it would be frozen Coke or Bovril, and I would probably have assumed that that was the Coke. <laughs> like a 50-50 draw. Oh! Oh, God. That was so bad. Ugh. Well, if you need to be warmed up, I know of a good drink you can have. Yeah, maybe next yeah. time. Next episode. Yeah. Stick, that, stick that in the Keurig. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that was amazing. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Well, we still got... Four more to go. Yeah, I tell you what, I feel bad for you. Let me go ahead and why don't you go ahead and eat number six? Oh. And then that'll that'll wash the taste oh, out of your no. mouth. Okay. This one's also frozen. Oh, apple juice. This is oh, that's this a good one. Apple juice. That's cool. gotta be refreshing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, this is great. There you go. That's cool. <laughs> 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 How the fuck? What a well, great game. Oh, I love Dodge God the Ball. Damn. <laughs> so you had a good time in Europe, Jeff? I did. I had a great time in the UK. I did all the it was Emily's first time going, so we did all the tourist stuff and uh and I did uh saw Oh my god! Have you guys ever seen a musical? Oh, they're pretty cool. Um, yeah, I saw, yeah, great. I saw Phantom of the Opera, uh, because I found out that even though my girlfriend <laughs> and I had been dating for almost five years, she had been harboring a secret, uh, that she had never, uh, never admitted to me. And that secret was, uh, she is the world's largest Andrew Lloyd Webber fan. And she yeah. can sing every song from every Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. So the second she found out we were going to London, she got us tickets to see Phantom of the Opera, which I knew nothing about. Uh, wow. zero, zero about. And so uh, now I know everything about it because I saw it. What is it about a burn victim? Yeah, it's about a burn victim in a hospital ward. Yeah. And they uh, no, it's about a, a phantom who lives in an opera house uh, and haunts a play. But there's this giant uh, chandelier. Whole thing's about a chandelier, basically. Uh, huh. And that's a big moment. But at this theater, which is the theater that originally it's like the I don't know what it's called, like the Queen Victoria Theater or some shit. And it was uh, it's played there every day since like 1984. Uh, she bought this like sixty dollar VIP experience, and because we were the only people who got that experience, probably because the play's been out for 106 years, uh, they gave us an upgrade. And there's a little room off to the side that was built for Queen Victoria when she would go to plays. And then uh, Lady Di apparently was a huge. Uh, Phantom fan, and so that was the room she would hang out in. So we got to hang out in a in a little room uh, off to the side by ourselves, where it was like real gold on the walls and shit. And I got to use the same toilet that Lady Diana used when <laughs> she would go see Phantom of the Did Opera. Did you poo? No, I just peed. I just peed. Okay. I don't want to be disrespectful to the crown, uh, so I just tinkled. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, my 
I have, uh, I have, uh, yeah, I have uh, hung out in similar uh, circles as uh, uh, British royalty now. I've not seen a lot of musicals. I saw Cats, and it was a boring <laughs> piece of shit. Uh, Mamma Mia was better. A movie? Are we talking no, movies not the, or like actually the, okay. the musical? Okay. I'm just asking. Mamma Mia was better because it had ABBA songs, but that was about it. I can't do ABBA. Not an ABBA fan. What's wrong? What's wrong with ABBA? <sighs> I have a I have a childhood memory associated to ABBA and I just can't I can't consume ABBA. I've avoided ABBA no. my whole life. It's just I think I, what that could would, be. Go ahead. Yeah. Would you uh, Would you like to? I'm willing to talk about it for sure. Then? If you want to, do you want to guess? Uh, you were at a wedding. Uh, Ooh, Dancing no. Queen came on. <laughs> no. Oh. No. It was is but uh, there is a kid who threw a birthday party uh, at school. Like he had his birthday party during class hours. And How he was very musical. That? I don't know, but he pulled it off, and he was very musical. He loved he loved singing, and he decided to do a rendition of ABBA's Golden or what what was it? Eyes the Eye song, Pretty Eyes, Golden Eyes. What's the ABBA song? Golden Eyes, Angel Eyes. That's what I was looking for. How does for. that go? I I just they say Angel Eyes a lot. That's all I remember <laughs> about it. But but they did a performance of Angel Eyes in front of the entire class, and it did not go well. And it was one of the most awkward uncomfortable things i've ever had to witness that i felt terrible about and because of that whenever i hear abba i immediately just go to that memory and i just did awkward and, and uncomfortable so i've not been able to enjoy mama mia might be tough for me i've avoided mama mia because of that i don't know angel eyes by abba i think somebody it was nick just posted a link to angel eyes yeah it's it's uh I don't know if it's a hit. I'm not familiar really with their catalog because of that experience. But whenever I hear ABBA, I get taken back to grade four, grade four or five, <laughs> watching this rendition of Angel Eyes and just cringing. It did not go well. We got to get you back into ABBA. We got to get an ABBA redemption for you. If you give me an Fernando ABBA, I'm willing like to try. Fernando is like a top 10 all-time song. What is? Oh, Fernando? Yeah. Fernando, yeah. Even that has been tainted. It's unfortunate that ABBA's been tainted for me, but it's just I can't I can't get around it, or at least I haven't been able to yet. Great band though, just I can't can't do it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen. Does it count if you watch like a streamed musical? Like I went to the theater and watched a streamed version of Company when Colbert was I think the lead at that time, but I've never been to like a proper musical like in the. In, in the place. Have you ever been to a musical, Jeff? Is this your first in-person musical? Uh, I've been to a lot of theater in my life, but I don't think I've ever been to a musical before. Yeah. I can't imagine the circumstances that would have led me to see a musical by choice <laughs> up until this moment. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I, this is my first time. Uh, I've, I quite, quite enjoyed it, though. That's great. So you're now open yeah. to going to like more musicals? You're going to become a musical mm. guy, potentially? No? Uh, no, for instance, a uh, regular fan, Jack, found out we were going to see, uh, found out we were going to see, uh, Phantom of the Opera, and he said, oh, that's great, I'm gonna go see the Back to the Future musical tomorrow, uh, you should come with me, and I was like, it's not gonna happen, so no, I don't think so, I think, uh, it'd be very specific, to, to, uh, share the experience with my girlfriend, uh, and only, uh, only, a uh, musical that she has vetted, I don't wanna see pop culture That is, shit. yeah, that's fair, I also feel like it's a different thing I'm more interested in seeing a musical that was crafted as a musical as opposed to a yeah. thing that was adapted from a movie into a musical. It may be amazing, but it's just it's that I'm if I'm getting into musicals, I want to hit like the 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 musical part first instead of yeah. Production. Well, uh, to be fair, I think Phantom is a was a uh, rendition of a old early 1900s movie that was based off a book. But it's I mean I think that when you think of Phantom of the Opera, you think of this play or this yes. musical, this Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. Absolutely. It's, it's synonymous with it. So I think he he kind of owns that story at this point. Um but I'll probably see like Lay Miz. Like apparently my my girlfriend's big on that one, mm. so I'll probably have to have to sit through that at some point. That's yeah. not a bad one. I've only seen the movie, but it was enjoyable. Yeah, I've seen none of it, so it'll be fresh for me. I saw the first half of the Gerard Butler Phantom of the Opera. I didn't mm. I didn't finish it though. I don't remember anything about it. I walked out halfway through and went into Fat Albert that was playing at the time. That was much more my speed. I had a much better time at Fat Albert. <laughs> Keenan Thompson's live action Fat Albert. <laughs> Keenan Thompson's got to be the most mentioned person on this podcast. On this podcast. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I would imagine so, yeah. Uh, 
I wonder if somebody could go do and do a, a person count. It'd be him. Coolio gets mentioned a lot. Oh, we need to uh, we need to guess another for the previously on guy. That's a great point. I had that in my notes. Do you two have uh, any questions you would like to ask before making your guess? Seeing a lot of comment leavers say it's, it's like Caleb or Drew Saplin. It's neither of them. Neither of those. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard this voice before. It sounds like someone from the West Coast. Okay. I mean, are you just stating that? Is that a question for me? No. Or, okay. You're just you're speaking out loud. I sort of have forgotten the questions I've already asked about. It. <laughs> yeah, it's rough doing this every couple of weeks. Uh, all right, Gav, you go first. Can I have an official question first? I don't know what that means. Yeah, of course, you can ask a question, and then you can make your guess. What season of f- face are they a part of? Oh, Jesus Christ. Do you expect me to remember the catalog of our absurd season system? <laughs> um, we're in season four right now, correct? Yeah. Uh-huh. I would assume that they were in season two. Okay. So okay. Uh, pretty early on. But I feel like season two went on a long time. I feel like that's covering a lot of ground. Season three was, what, three episodes? So. Uh, <clears throat> I don't even think it, yeah. Uh, is it um, Roadmaster 74? I don't even, who is Roadmaster 74? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I remember Jeff saying it. No, it is not Roadmaster 74. Jeff, do you have any questions? <laughs> I mean, I would like to know who Roadmaster 74 even fucking is and why I would have <laughs> said so that name. I. I only know that name because you were saying, you were like, I'm going to say Roadmaster 74. I'm going to keep saying his name, Roadmaster 74. And then you immediately got his name wrong. And like the next time you mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it, is it somebody who appeared on the, uh, the F- Face Christmas album? No. Okay. Oh, were they in Fluke Face? can't ask two questions you already ah, asked shit. you you asked early remind me to ask that next time okay. is it the person who because i can i can now ask so that was my question now, now can i make, make my guess? guess you can make your guess i guess it's uh the person who played gavin in the fluke face recording uh, that was a uh a female that was a voice. welsh woman yeah so that's no. that's a no that's a no on that <laughs> one, but i appreciate your shot <laughs> damn <laughs> I think you could argue that was the worst guess by far. Like as well. As <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I, think, I don't think there's. Uh, who's arguing? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. I feel like you asked the same question back to back, or Gavin wasn't. There's something where one. You guys both asked the same question. I think that was worse than that. <laughs> no, that was one when Nick asked the same. <laughs> oh, okay, that's what it was. Yeah, because <laughs> Nick missed it. I have, I have uh, a question. Go ahead and, but while Gavin's asking that question, why don't you go ahead and eat the fourth pop? Oh yeah, number four. Okay. Yeah, okay. uh, Jeff, while Andrew's eating that, you were a Game of Thrones fan, right? You read yes, the books? I was. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. How, do you, how do you pronounce this name? Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. That's Anus oh. Targaryen. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't remember that character from the show. I don't either, but that's, I'm pretty sure that's Anus, yeah. <laughs> George R. Martin's taking the piss. Yeah, yeah. Well... Uh, Anus Targaryen, first of his name. <laughs> only, of, <laughs> I would hope only of his name. <laughs> yeah, it went. Uh, according to this, went Aegon Targaryen, Anus Targaryen, and then back to Aegon Targaryen. So we have a problem. His family tree's a mess. Oh, okay, <laughs> I pulled Is it. it. Non frozen. I pulled it. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like sour cream. Sour cream. <laughs> Oh, it's all oh, the smell. I just got hit with the smell. Oh, it's so, oh. Scoop it out. Oh. You're going to have to spoon it. I fucking hate you, Gavin. You're two for two on bad. <laughs> Jeff is no, two Jeff for two. That. No. Yeah, I picked that one. You did? Yeah. I don't even. Yeah, okay, I, I apologize. I, picked it. I apologize. I you can still hate Gavin. And, that's fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> I guess I'll try to scoop it out. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. Okay. Oh, this this it's like it's good. like soft oh. soft serve salad cream. <laughs> is that batter or salad cream? Oh, is that batter? It could be batter, but I it think looks it's like salad batter. cream. A pancake. Oh, it's, pa- it's pancake batter. It's pancake. Yeah. Batter. Mm. Well, that's probably quite yummy then. Oh. 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 <laughs> All the noises are different. Oh. This is gross, but it's not bad. Okay, where would you rate it? <laughs> 
a one. Okay. So we got this is a one. nine, negative six, and one. Mm-hmm. This is yeah, this is gross, but it's not bad. <laughs> like I would the ter- the idea once you mentally get past what you're doing, it's not it's not the worst. So Jeff's still picking good ones then. Okay, yeah, that's you're welcome. We're, we're really not good. Never mind. I didn't retract everything I said. This is horrible. <laughs> oh, is this the non-frozen one? No. So yeah. you, oh, that's the frozen one. So you have uh, one and three left, or your your final final two. Okay. Uh, Gav, why don't you take a guess? One. Okay. I. I fucking hate you so much. <laughs> I, I hate you. This is the one that isn't that isn't frozen. So this has to be this has to be salad cream. Maybe it's like the oil content. Okay, pull in one. Oh, it's so <laughs> gross. It's so two, gross. Two for two, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Gavin. Oh. You're a good man. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a photo of <laughs> On the bright side, it'll get that batter out of your mouth. Oh, I don't know if that's a positive. I think I'd rather have the oh, batter. Oh, God. oh it looks like tapioca pudding. Oh, that's <laughs> it's so bad. It's so translucent at the edges. Oh, it's horrendous. Oh, that's the oh, salad that's cream. Hideous. Oh. When were these frozen? Uh, yesterday. So this has that's been, been like, frozen all night. That's and been it frozen like that? all night. Oh and, god. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have some salad cream. Oh god. Without your salad. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I got. I got go. I go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we end the process with him retching in the back? Uh, no, I don't think anyone's ever eaten those things in that order. Oh. No, that's a world first, right? Andrew Panton is the first person in the history of the planet Earth to eat Must those be. ingredients in that state, oh. in that order. Congratulations, that deserves to be in the Guinness Book of Gross Ass Records. That's the Panton thank you. gauntlet. <laughs> oh, thank you for listening to another episode of the F- Face Podcast. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> as we outro, you can continue to hear the dulcet sounds of Andrew retching all over his bedroom. Uh, <laughs> if you want to go ahead and oh s- leave us a review or a rating, believe it or not, that shit matters and it helps. And as I found out in the UK, uh, you know, there's a, there's like seven, a little over seven billion people on Earth, Gavin. <laughs> Most of them don't listen to f- face. So if you have access to those 7 billion people, give them a gentle nudge. Let them know. Uh, we got salad cream frozen bomb pops. We got, we got Bovril hot and cold. We got, uh, we got apples. We got baseballs. We got whatever you want. Uh, we make content out of it. And uh, yeah, Andrew, why don't you go ahead and play us out? Hey guys, Minor League Fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. We still don't know who the previously on guy is. Let's talk about being John Malkovich. This podcast needs more shirts. Panton goes on a rant about people dying in movies. Will we find out the fate of Jeff's Cosmic Crisp? And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face.